Hello guys, uh, I'm Satan and I'm here welcoming you into uh, 2021. Seriously though, what the hell was that? I'm not going to go into it. Anyway, let's just go straight into this episode, shall we? Because it's been a while and, you know, I'm back here. Look, hi, how are we doing? Anyway, so we're on episode three now of favourite games of uh, 2020, 2018, whatever it was. I don't know. I can't remember. Basically in the last few years. So, yeah, let's just go straight for the uh, first game, shall we? So... Yes, there it is. Uh, Devil May Cry 5. Um, so I am a huge Devil May Cry fan. Um, ever since the beginning, basically. It um, basically incorporates so many things that I love. Kind of horror, action, and like fantasy. Uh, give a little bit of history of this. So the first one came out in 2001 on PlayStation 2. Uh, and I remember first playing it and I was like, oh my god, I love this so much. It was originally supposed to actually be um, the next Resident Evil game, Resident Evil 4. Um, but when they did the design and concept of the island and the castle, they realised they were going really like fantasy with it, and that even too much for you know Resident Evil. So they realised they wanted to have to do a separate game. Interestingly, though, Resident Evil 4 ended up still incorporating a castle into it, just in a different setting. But you know, anyway, um, and it's flourished through there. And we had basically four lovely instalments. Um, the fourth one, I think, was in 2008, something like that. And then something uh, interesting happened where they basically um, decided to then stop what they were doing there, all the beloved characters and the classic look of Dante. And then they completely remade it uh, with a different studio about four years later. And it was then called DMC, uh, Devil May Cry. And there was kind of a bit of backlash with it, as you can imagine, because they changed the character and how he looked. And it was like, oh my God, you're playing with what we love so much. I actually quite liked the look of the new Dante they made. I thought he still looked quite hot, even though he was slimmer and like black hair. He was a bit more sort of punk and edgy, which I quite liked. Um, but yeah, and I actually played that game and I thought it was great. It felt really edgy with it. It felt really, you know, interesting. The combat system was great. It still felt like a Devil May Cry game. Then a weird thing here, almost like a Terminator type vibe, you know, where they keep changing timelines and things. This came out of nowhere a little bit and they went, you know what, we're going to actually just go back to what we did before um, and do Devil May Cry 5 and continue on <laughs> and ignore the remake. And that's kind of a, a positive and a negative thing because obviously the positive thing is, oh, this is great, we get a new game, we go back to this. But obviously the negative is we're not going to see the continuation of the remake that they did. Um, but anyway, so we've got this and here it is and uh, yeah, I played it and I absolutely loved it It had all the classic vibe and feel of the uh, the older ones It's felt a lot quicker. I think in terms of the combat style That's probably mainly to do with things like Bayonetta if you've played that before because the combat system was it's very similar to Devil May Cry But they ramped up the speed and everything even more so um, And it just felt so nice actually to play a Devil May Cry game again because it had been so long It'd been like eight years or something some pros and cons of this one, I would say um, a pro being, once again, the boss battles are amazing. They're so big and epic and over the top. Uh, a slight con for me that I felt like around the middle and maybe towards the, the, yeah, towards the second half, a lot of the levels become quite repetitive inside the tree that you're going inside. Um, it's not to say it wasn't interesting or fun to play, but I felt like we needed another environment there because you do start out in the city and then you go inside this weird twisted tree that's appeared in the middle of the city. But a couple of the levels did feel a little bit repetitive, but it wasn't enough to put me off or anything. And then one that I think is a con and a pro that I've heard from players is the fact that you play three different characters at this one. You play Nero, Dante, and new character called V. Um, and I think a con of that being that um, because you play so many characters and you switch between them, you know, when you're kind of getting used to one of them, then you move on to another one and you think, oh, okay, and then I'll switch on to another character. And sometimes with you, you just want to play that one character and that one linear sort of story sometimes. Um, but then a pro being that it gives more variety, you know, between switching the three characters. And V particularly is a really interesting character because there was a lot of people that actually didn't quite like his combat style, but I really did because it was so different. You basically, he has three animals. He has like a, a bird, like a hawk type thing, a jaguar, a nightmare creature and you control the creatures in the combat and you use different buttons on the controller that will operate different creatures to do things. So the combat system suddenly became so much more like dynamic and there was so much more things to do. It wasn't just, oh, you're hacking and slashing a sword. I was like, that button does that creature, that button does that creature. So you're doing multiple things at once. 
And I really loved this little sort of hidden gem they did was that when you're in the story, you have to fight the Jaguar and the Hawk or the bird or whatever. The Griffin, the little baby, baby Griffin, sorry. Um, they did a remixed music of when you fight similar creatures in Devil May Cry 1. So when you fight a Jaguar, when you fight this sort of or panther, or whatever it is, and then you, you fight the Griffin as a boss, they did a remixed music in this like 19, 20 years later. And I noticed that as I heard it, I was like, okay, that's really cool. So yeah, I loved it. Uh, I've only completed it once, so I need to play it again. So I'll probably get back to playing it very soon, actually. So yeah, that's it. So let's go on to the next one. Where is it? Why are you over there? Stupid thing. Anyway, uh, Resident Evil 3. Um, this is uh, another remake, basically. Uh, not like a remastered. Complete build up from the ground, the floor up. Uh, I spoke about number two in another video, another uh, episode of this series thing that I'm doing. Um, and I spoke about how much I loved it and how much I thought it was one of the best remakes that's ever been made, I think. Um, this one, once again, came a bit out of the blue. They did number two, really successful. They went, oh, by the way, we've done number three as well. And this was released pretty quick, I think within a year. Um, and I was like, I'm all for this. I'm all for it. Um, it features one of the most iconic villains, which is the Nemesis in it, which is uh, really exciting. I remember watching my brother play number three and being scared shitless of him chasing, going stars after things. I think he just really likes stars. He should go on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, really, shouldn't he? It's just stars, stars. Um, so this instalment, um, the reviews again and the sort of critiques were quite similar to actually how the original third was compared to the second one because the second one is real classic horror vibe this one incorporates a bit more action elements to it as in in the remake as well so a lot of people felt like oh it deviates a little bit from that horror vibe but playing this one i have to say it wasn't as much as i thought people were making it out it's still got that classic horror vibe you're still in the city there's still bits where you're in like swamps uh, sewers, I say swamps then, sewers, um, and all those kind of vibes where, you know, you're in dark corridors and my bedroom, no, um, and it just feels a bit sort of scary and sort of, you're being chased once again by this creature. Um, and that's why we liked as well, they kept the whole vibe where he keeps appearing again, like he did in the original, he appears now and then you fight him, you're always running around feeling like you're scared he's gonna come after you. Um, and even towards the end, I felt like they added some new elements as well. I really liked how it opened and started. I, I actually loved it. It was a really nice horror game to play. Wasn't too long, uh, wasn't too short either, I think. Easily replayable. Yep, yeah. you know. And I got it on Xbox as well, mainly because um, <laughs> I got this one in whatever that lockdown was in the summer, the 175th lockdown, I don't know. And I didn't have my PlayStation with me, and my brother had an Xbox. So I was like, well, I'll buy it on Xbox then. So yeah, there you go. Uh, next game. Okay, here we go. We got a big one here. The game, not my hands. Good for loaves of bread. Anyway, um, Last of Us Part Two. Um, I felt like I was waiting for 300 years for this game to come about uh, after the first one, because the first one came out, I think it was in 2013. Um, so there was a huge amount of anticipation for this game. Now I have quite a lot to say about this, so but I will, try and shorten it, otherwise I could talk about this for several months. Um, I absolutely adored the first one. Like, I thought it was incredible. So they all feel, because there was so much anticipation for it, a lot of people were looking into the media and news. And if you're aware about this game, there was a, once again, a backlash because people were finding out certain things about it before it came out and certain negative things. I tried to step away from that. I didn't want to know. I saw a couple of the trailers, that was it. I, didn't want to look at anything else into it. I wanted to go into it in a complete fresh light. Now, obviously without giving too much away, if you've been under a rock and you haven't played this game, um, that the, the incident that happens early on that a lot of people were you know, angry about. When I played it and it happened, I was like, okay, I can see why people are pissed off. Okay, this is me being cryptic. However, when you play the game and you keep playing it, you realize that that's what drives the plot. Okay, it drives the whole narrative. And playing Ellie, the main character, way through it, there's just so much emotion going through it. And I felt like I played this game 
and I felt like I was getting towards the end of the game, only to obviously discover that you're then playing Abby, the second character, who you go through the first half of the game absolutely hating, to then play Abby and play her side of the story, and then it flips. And I've never played something quite like this, where all of my thoughts and feelings and emotions suddenly then flipped, and now I've got two contrasting feelings playing the two kind of main characters in it. And I was amazed at how long the game was as well. Compared to the first one, it's like twice as long as the first one. And it just felt so epic in terms of the, the emotion level that you're going through in every incident that happens. It just felt so real, so raw. And when I got to the end part of this, uh, the very, very ending, I was literally like in tears basically because of just the experience of it and just how well I thought it was done and the characters and the fact they had a, a trans character in it and any of the backlash or things that I heard negative things about it, particularly when people were saying certain things towards the actors, I don't condone at all. And I think you're all idiots, basically anyone that had uh, those views, because it's an incredible game and it deserved everything that I think it got. It ended up becoming the biggest like PS4 release ever. It's smashed the sales and things which it deserved to do. Because when you play it, it is, it's also just a really good combat and a good horror game as well and the way it paces it and the, you know, the things that you do and it took all the best elements from the first one, expanded them. I don't know if I can say it's better than the first one because they've got a different feel to them. I, I don't think it's, you, you can't compare them, I don't think. I think in terms of what one's better, they're just at different levels. So I think this ended up becoming one of the, the best games I've played easily in the last 10 years. Um, and I think I'll, I'll enjoy playing it again, but I, I would probably play it again in maybe a year's time. I don't think it's a game I can rush back to playing again. Um, but yeah, I loved it. And obviously if they're gonna do a part three, which I hope they do, then if it took them this time to perfect this, then I'm fine with that and we can wait for the next one. So yeah, that was my vibe and feeling for it. So yeah, that's it for this episode. Um, stay safe into 2021 and I hope you all have fun and I'm gonna go and run in the woods now and sing with gerbils. <laughs>